morning friends in this lecture let us learn about continuous casting process this continuous casting process was first con first conceived by bismer in the year 1958 later it gained popularity during 1960s and it is used to cast long ingots square billets and many more what say complex uh, sectioned components and this is the simple principle of the continuous casting and here is the ladle in which there will be molten steel or some other molten metal will be there and here there is a tun dish means a reservoir of the molten metal below the tun dish there is a mold this is the water cooled mold will be there so from the molten what say ladle the molten metal will be, will be poured into the tun dish and from the tun dish and it will be passing through the mold where there will be cooling system and it will be cooled down so slowly the solidification is uh, game increasing you can see here so slowly there will be it will be moving and there will be rollers will be there and these rollers will be rotating and you can see here by the time it comes here it is totally solidified then it will be further moving and here it will be cut using some torch or any saksa it will be cut and here this is the finished slab so it can be a cylindrical slab square slab hexagonal slab or any other what say uh, section so this is the uh, simple principle of continuous casting so before going uh, what say further let us see the classification types of the continuous casting process broadly they can be classified into four types one is the vertical continuous casting second one curved continuous casting third one horizontal continuous casting and the fourth one strip continuous casting and the first one the vertical continuous casting is sub classified as vertical downwards continuous casting and the other one is the vertical upward continuous casting now we will see all these one by one first we will see the vertical continuous casting under that let us see the vertical downwards continuous casting so this is the vertical downward continuous casting means the solidified billet or the solidified bar will be traveling towards the bottom towards downwards so that is the vertical downwards continuous casting so here we can see this is the furnace in which the molten metal is there and this is the tun dish means a reservoir a local reservoir which accommodates the molten metal now below the tun dish there is a graphite mold is there you see this is the graphite mold now the molten metal from the ladle is poured into the tun dish and from the tun dish the molten metal will be flowing through the graphite mold as it is flowing there is a cooling system is there and also there is a crystallizer because of that it uh, solidifies as it is going out of the graphite mold and by the time here it comes to the a place called secondary cooling and here it will be further cooled now further it still comes down and here there are roll supports are there so these will be rotating like this and another roll will be rotating like this so because of that the solidified bar will be coming down so after it is completely solidified you see here here there is a saw so it cuts periodically so uh, the solidified bar and the cut bar is taken and it is sent for the further processing so this is the a uh, simple principle of vertical downwards casting continuous casting and here we can see it goes like this now what are the applications of vertical downward continuous casting the vertical downward continuous casting machine is also used for manufacture of copper brass and bronze bars tubes and sections so these are all the different components produced by vertical downward continuous casting second one under the vertical continuous casting is the vertical upward continuous casting in the case of the vertical downward continuous casting the solidified bar is coming downwards but in the case of the vertical upward continuous casting the solidified bar goes upwards in the opposite direction this was developed for faster manufacturing of thin bars or wires during the 90s of the 20th century uh, this is the what's a 
uh, schematic of the vertical uh, upward continuous casting. And here this is the turn dish means a local reservoir of the molten metal and this is the ladle. Now, we pour the molten metal from the ladle into the turn dish. Now, here is the system that after solidification it will be pushed to pass through the graphite mold. You see here is a graphite mold. So, it will be pushed to pass through the graphite mold then what will happen? It will be coming upwards. Now, here there is a crystallizer and also a cooling system will be there because of that the solidified bar will be moving upwards slowly it will be moving upwards. Yes, once it comes to this section it is totally solidified. Then there is a roller support is there, these rollers will be rotating and they will be further pushing the solidified bar upwards and here there is a saw. So, th this saw cuts the solidified bar periodically or at the desired location. What are the advantages of upward uh, what say vertical upward continuous casting? It results in higher casting speed. Physical properties of the gained alloys are better in this case. Next one, possibility to change fast crystallizer to cool it and to warm it up of the necessity. Applications of vertical upward continuous casting, this method is being basically used for manufacturing products of 8, 8 to 30 millimeters diameter means for smaller diameter components or the bars this method can be successfully used. Vertical upward casting is applied for casting of bronze, copper and also nickel alloys. Next one let us see the curved continuous casting. So, we have completed the first category now we will see the curved continuous casting. The curved continuous casting the schematic looks like this is similar to the vertical downwards casting, but there is a difference. In the case of the vertical downwards casting the bar only comes downwards, but it does not bend, it does not take any curve. But here yes the molten metal from the what say tundish it comes downwards to some extent then it will take a curve and it becomes horizontal that is the curved continuous casting and the principle is almost similar to the previous ones. And here there is a ladle which accommodates the molten steel. This curved continuous uh, what say casting process is mainly used for making steel billets. So, here we can see this is the molten steel is here in the ladle. From the ladle it comes to the tundish, tundish means the local reservoir. Now, here there is the here is the mold, here is the mold. So, it passes through the mold, around the mold there will be cooling system will be there. So, as the molten metal is passing through the mold it will be undergoing solidification, solidification commences. You see solidification is gradually increasing here, it, here it has started and solidification is gradually increasing by the time it comes to this point the solidification is complete. Now, here there is you can see uh, this is the mold and here there is a spray cooling, cooling system will be there by means of a spray. Now, here there will be uh, support rollers will be there. So, these rollers will be rotating as they are rotating the solidified bar will be taking a curve and slowly it takes a horizontal direction and by the time it comes here it is totally solidified. Now, somewhere here it will be cut using some torch or a saw. So, likewise as the what is the solidified bar is coming out it will be periodically cut or it will be cut at the desired position. So, this is the uh, principle of the curved continuous casting. Applications of curved continuous casting, it is used for making steel billets, sections, bars and so on. Next one let us see the horizontal continuous casting. What is the principle here? Yes, in the previous case in the case of the vertical downward continuous casting the solidified bar was coming downwards and in the case of the vertical upwards continuous casting the solidified bar was going upwards. In the case of the curved continuous casting the solidified bar was coming downwards and it is taking a curve and it becomes horizontal. And here the solidified bar right from the beginning will be moving horizontal. So, that is the principle here. Now, this is the furnace, this is the ladle. From the ladle it will be flowing into the tundish, tundish means the local reservoir. And here we can see the, here is the graphite mold 
and the graphite mold will have a passes may be a circular passes or a square passes or a hexagonal passes depending upon the requirement and here there is a crystallizer means uh, which cools down and it uh, what say enables formation of the crystallization next one here is the secondary cooling now, yes yes the molten metal is transferred from the furnace to the hot uh, what say tundish and it will be flowing through the graphite mold as it is flowing out of the graphite mold because of the crystallizer crystallization takes place and its solidification starts and by the time it comes somewhere here it is totally solidified and here is the secondary cooling once it passes the secondary cooling it is totally solidified and here there are roller supports are there these roller supports will be pulling the solidified bar away from the mold and somewhere here there is a saw so this saw again it will be cutting the solidified bar at the equal what's the intervals or at the desired location so this is the principle of the horizontal continuous casting what are the applications of horizontal continuous casting making of the thin wires making of rods making of tubes making of strips and what's a custom sections and commonly used to cast non ferrous alloys like copper alloys so these are the uh, what's a typical components produced by the horizontal continuous casting finally let us see the strip continuous casting so this is the last one now this is the what's a schematic diagram of the strip continuous casting and here you can see here this is the molten metal from the furnace from that ladle it is being transferred so this is the tundish again a local reservoir of the molten metal and here we can see the what this is the uh, what's a place where the molten metal will be passing through through rollers you can see here this is one what's a roller uh, or the cast roller and here you can see one more roller is there so this will be moving so this cooler this uh, what's a roller will be moving in this direction and this will be moving in this direction now the molten metal will be passing through the gap between these through rollers and there will be a cooling system will be there you can see here there is a cooling system between these two rollers so as the molten metal is flow, flowing through this uh, through these two what say strips through uh, two rollers by the time it comes out it will be solidifying and here we can see this is the cast strip a thin cast strip is coming out so this is the strip continuous casting we are not producing any bars or rods here but thin and wide strips are produced in this uh, process now the casting rate is you can see here 0.5 to 10 meters per minute maximum width of the cast slab is 1.175 meters slab up to the width of 1.175 meters can be produced the slab gauge is within the range of 10 to 40 millimeters so this is the thickness of the strip 10 to 40 mm applications of strip continuous casting it is used to produce bars and tubes and maximum diameter is 40 cm next one it is also used to produce wires and the maximum diameter is say 16 to 25 mm and what are the alloys covered under this process copper brass bronze nickel silver copper nickel and precious metals can be uh, what's a cast using this strip continuous casting process let us see the advantages of the continuous casting broadly whether it is the uh, downwards casting or the upwards casting whether it is the uh, curved continuous casting or the horizontal continuous casting what are the advantages in general it is the it gives us 100% casting yield what is this casting yield let us see the principle casting yield is defined as the weight of the casting divided by weight of the poured metal multiplied by 100 so this is the definition for the casting yield in any of the casting process whether it is the sand casting process or the investment casting process or any other casting process the weight of the poured metal is always greater than the weight of the casting that is how the casting yield is always less than 100% but in this case in the case of the continuous casting we are not losing anything whatever we are pouring we are getting as a strip or as a bar or as a rod 
So, here we are getting 100 percent casting yield. Second advantage is cheaper to produce ingots compared to rolling. Ingots can be produced by rolling also, but by if we produce them by rolling the cost is more, but if we produce them by continuous casting of course, the initial establishment cost may be more, but the running cost will be lesser compared to the rolling. Next one, in this case using continuous casting we get good surface finish or the better surface finish. Next advantage is grain structure can be regulated. The process is automatic, it requires less labor. So, these are the advantages of the continuous casting process. These are the applications of continuous casting in general. Long billets of any cross section can be obtained where it is round, square, hexagonal, gear toothed or any cross section can be obtained or uh, that too long billets can be obtained using the continuous casting process. Solid and hollow ingots also can be produced, not only solid, but also hollow ingots can be produced. Next one, bushings and pump gears can be produced using continuous casting process. Next one, production of copper bars or the wire using continuous casting is very easy and it is economical. So, these are the what is the typical components produced by continuous casting. So, this is the what is the gear blank produced by continuous casting. This is as cast material without any machining the what is a uh, bar the cast bar or the it looks like this. After machining yes it looks like this. So, this is the what is a gear uh, blank. Of course, this can be cut into several slices depending upon the requirement. Next one let us see the advances in continuous casting process. The most important advance is the electromagnetic stirring it is also known as EMS. So, this electromagnetic steering or EMS is used in the continuous casting to improve product quality and production. How? In EMS, a rotating magnetic field is generated whose variation inside steel produces eddy currents. We apply what is a rotating magnetic field because of that eddy current is produced inside the molten metal. Now, these eddy currents produce Lorange force and subsequently a torque, torque which induce rotation inside the molten metal or the inside the steel. So, because we are producing the magnetic field, what say eddy currents are produced inside, because of these eddy currents, Lorange force is produced and because of that, there will be rotation inside the molten metal. So, this causes the what say grain improvement. What are the advantages? of the electromagnetic steering in continuous casting. It promotes the formation of an equi-axed crystallic zone in the strand. We get the, it is possible that there may be equi-axed grains or the columnar grains or the dendritic uh, what is a structure may be there, but equi-axed crystallitic zone is always favorable. Equi-axed grains are always better compared to any other grains. So, when we give the EMS, we get the equi axed grains. Next one, this EMS causes refinement of the solidification. Grain refinement can be achieved. So, because of the grain refinement, we get the me better mechanical properties. Next one, it causes reduction in the content of inclusions. If there are any unwanted inclusions will be there, they will be reduced because of the EMS. Next one, EMS minimizes surface and surface, subsurface cracks. So, once uh, because we apply the EMS, grains will be removed, larger grains will be broken into smaller grains. So, because of that, surface and sub, subsurface cracks will be minimized. Next one, it helps to reduce pinhole and blowhole defects. So, this pinhole and blowhole defects arise due to the presence of the dissolved gases. So, when we cause this what say, uh, this EMS, what happens inside the metal will be rotated. So, because of that if there are there is any unwanted gas or the dissolved gas it will be coming out. Next advantage is the it reduces center line segregation. Next one it helps in breakout reduction. What is the problem? Sometimes when the solidified bar is coming out or as it is going away from the mold due to the rotation of the rollers somewhere it breaks. 
So, wherever it breaks that is a waste again we have to cut it and we have to dump it in the what is a furnace. Now, because of this EMS application this breakout will be reduced. So, that, uh, that is another important advantage of the electromagnetic steering in the continuous casting. Now, we have seen the importance and applications advantages of the electromagnetic steering in continuous casting. Now, there are diff three diff types of the EMS uh, applications are there. Three possible EMS applications according to the position are one is the mould EMS, mould electromagnetic steering, it is also known as MEMS. Second one, EMS applied at the secondary cooling zone. So, this is known as the secondary cooling zone EMS or simply SEMS. Next one, final solidification zone EMS or FEMS. Now, we will see this one by one. First, we will see the mould EMS or MEMS. MEMS is usually installed in the lower part of the mould for stirring of the liquid steel in the mould. M MEMS is either of round or square design and it can be installed internally or externally. Let us see how it is. Yes, so this is the continuous casting what is a uh, process it is going on. So, here is the mould and through the mould the liquid metal is coming and gradually it is solidifying. Yes, by the time it comes here it is totally solidified. Now, this M MEMS is applied here around the mould. See here, so this is the mould, this is the mould, around the mould it is applied. So, this is known as the, because we are applying around the mould, it is known as the mould EMS or MEMS. Now, the application, what are the advantages of mould EMS? The application of MEMS results into reduction of pinholes, central porosity and segregation in the cast product. If there are any pinholes due to the presence of gases, they will be minimized. Next one, it improves the solidification structure, reduces the surface roughness and increases the heat delivery rate. So, these are the advantages of the mould electromagnetic steering. Now, let us see the second uh, type of EMS, secondary cooling zone EMS or it is also known as SEMS. What is this? Again, let us see. Yes, EMS produces a stirring force that pushes the liquid steel horizontally along the cast product width. We can see here, it pushes the liquid steel horizontally along the cast product width. Next one, yes, EMS is usually used in combination with MEMS, means uh, prior to applying yes, EMS, we should also use MEMS, means the electromagnetic steering around the mold. SEMS can be of either linear or rotary type stirrer. Most common is the linear stirrer. Yes, it is where SEMS is applied. So, this is the way place where we apply the MEMS, then the what is a solidified um, bar is coming like this and here is the secondary cooling zone. So, near the secondary cooling zone, we place the SEMS setup. As the molten metal solidified metal is passing through SEMS, we get the required what say properties. Now, these are the advantages of secondary cooling zone EMS. SEMS promotes the formation of equiaxial structure, again very, very important and most required property, equiaxial grains we will be getting. Next one, it promotes grain refinement in the cast product and reduces the shrinkage cavity, center segregation and internal cracks. Next one, it also removes superheat effectively. Once we remove this superheat effectively, the solidification becomes faster. So, we have completed the first two. Now, finally, let us see the third one that is the final solidification zone EMS, FEMS. FEMS is generally installed in combination with MEMS or SEMS to reduce peaks in center what is a segregation. So, if we want to apply FEMS prior to that, we should have used either MEMS or SEMS. FEMS is particularly efficient when casting high carbon or high alloy steel grades. Yes, again here this is the place where we apply the 
FEMS means after final certification he you see here. So, here we apply the FEMS. So, this is the FEMS setup. What are the advantages of final certification zone EMS? FEMS reduces shrinkage and the center central carbon segregation. Next one FEMS also improves the secondary dendrite arm spacing and the central equiaxial grains which results in finer grains. Now, with this we are we have completed the types of the uh, what say EMS uh, what say process. We have seen the three types of the EMSs that can be applied in the continuous casting process. Next let us see the common mold fluxes used in the center what say continuous casting process. The mold fluxes are synthetic slags constituted by a complex mix of oxides, minerals and carbonaceous materials. So, these are the ingredients of the mould fluxes. We use the mould fluxes in the continuous casting. So, how these are added? These fluxes can be added through the top of the mould on the liquid steel manually or automatically. Yes, the, in the tin dish we pour the molten metal from the furnace or from the ladle. Just above the tin dish we place these fluxes manually or automatically. What are the common what is a fluxes? Yes, it can be silicon dioxide, calcium oxide, sodium oxide, lithium oxide and titanium dioxide. So, any of this mix, a mix of any of these can be used as the mould fluxes. Now, the next question is why we should add the mould fluxes? What are the functions of these mould fluxes? So, these are the functions of the mould fluxes. One is the thermal insulation, they offer us give us the thermal insulation. Because of that heat is not wasted, sometimes uh, we expect it to be in the molten state for some time, but it solidifies. Why? Heat is going out, but these fluxes act as the thermal insulators. Next one, prevention of reoxidation, there may be oxidation may be there, so that will be prevented, prevention of reoxidation. Next one, inclusions will be entrapped because of the fluxes. Next one, most important is they act as the lubricant between the solidified shell and the mould. If this lubrication is not there, the solidified shell will be sticking to the mould wall and the solidified shell will be breaking as it is pushed downwards. Fortunately, these mould fluxes act as the lubricants. Next one, they also give us the, they also control the heat transfer rate, so that the what say shell will be solidifying at the required place and at the required time. Next one, let us see the continuous casting defects. So, so far we have seen the different types of the casting process we have seen and the different types of the what say EMS applications we have seen uh, and mould fluxes we have seen. Now, finally, the continuous casting defects. What are the continuous casting defects? We have seen the advantages and applications of the continuous casting, but at times we also get the defects. And if we do not know how to control these defects, most of the labor and time that we are investing will go wasted. So, if we have if we want to prevent this loss, we must be aware what are the defects that are likely to arise and what are the factors that are influencing these defects we need to learn. Now, let us learn about the defects. So, these are the what is a common continuous casting defects. One is the sticking of the fluxes, second one slag entrapment, third one longitudinal cracks, fourth one transverse cracks, fifth one star cracks, sixth one longitudinal depressions, seventh one transverse depressions, eighth one blow holes, ninth one interruption in the physical continuity and the tenth one shrinkage cavity. Now, let us see all these one by one. First, let us see the sticking of the fluxes. Yes, sticking of the fluxes uh, will be like this. Yes, this is the what say mould, this is the mould and this is the molten metal. As the molten metal is uh, going down, yes, this red colored one indicates the solidification, solidified portion. Now, what happens? If there is no sticking, it looks like this. So, this is the normal shell formation, but shell distorted by sticking what happens? Here the shell is sticking to the mould, if that be the case, 
it becomes like this. So, here there is a damage to the shell. So, this is due to the sticking of the fluxes. Next one slag entrapment and here we can see slag, slag entrapment is indicated as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These places the slag is entrapped. So, because of that these slag entrapments they cause some discontinuities in the cast billet means slag is not properly removed from the molten metal. Next defect is the longitudinal cracks. They appear due to the unevenly removal of the heat in the mold. They also appear due to turbulent flow of the metal and a meniscus level variation in the mold. They also appear due to secondary cooling too intense or uneven. They also appear due to unequal advanced wear of the mold that leads to a different thermal conductivity coefficient and they also appear due to high casting temperature. Finally, they also appear due to inappropriate behavior of the casting powder. So, these are all the factors that are influencing the longitudinal cracks. So, this is the typical appearance of longitudinal cracks. They look like this. You see longitudinal cracks means uh, parallel to the axis of the bar. This is the longitudinal crack. Next one let us see the transverse cracks. These transfer uh, cracks right uh, are due to the following right. The thermal stresses due to the uneven solidification of the crust. Next one meniscus level variation. Next one friction of the strand in the mold. So, all these contribute to the formation of the transverse cracks. Let us see the typical application uh, appearance. Yes, transfer in the case of the previous one, the longitudinal cracks means those cracks are parallel to the axis of the bar, but here these, uh, these cracks are perpendicular to the axis of the bar. So, these are known as the transverse cracks. Next one, the next defect is the star cracks. The causes for the star cracks are the intense local cooling which induce local tensions and the presence of copper at the austenitic grain limit. These cracks they look like what say a star they have the star appearance you can see here they look like a star they, they are not perpendicular to the axis they are not parallel to the axis but in multi directions they develop cracking. So, this is the star crack. Next one longitudinal depressions. So, this is another defect the longitudinal depressions are caused due to the following factors the unequal development of the marginal crust. Second factor the steel level fluctuation in the mold and a too large quantity of the metal flux located in the space between the mold wall and the strand. Next factor the turbulent steel flow at the sub meniscus level and the next factor is the uneven and advanced wear of the mold which results in a different coefficient of thermal conductivity. So, these are the typical appearances of longitudinal depressions means these are the depressions parallel to the x of the job or x of the bar. So, you can see here these are all the depressions, but their orientation is parallel to the axis. So, we are calling them as the longitudinal depressions. Next one transverse depressions. The transverse depressions are formed in the transverse direction and may cyclically occur in relation to the strand length. The width of the depressions may cover some oscillation marks and the depth can reach several millimeters. The peritectic steels with low carbon percent and high percentage of manganese and the stainless steels are sensitive to the formation of this type of defects due to the much larger contractions occurred during solidification. Yes, this is the typical appearance of transverse depressions. Next one blow holes. Blow holes can arise due to the following insufficient steel deoxidation, presence of gases hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen. Next one humidity of the casting powder, quality of the casting powder, percentage carbon, viscosity, basicity, quantity of uh, uniformity of its distribution, quantity and uniformity of its distribution. Next one variation of the steel level in the mould existence of moisture in the refractory lining of the tundish. Next one, the presence of organ 
entered in the mouth during the injection of organ for filling the nozzle. These are the typical appearances of blow holes. Next one, interruptions in the physical continuity in is the next defect. So, this defect is caused by a short interruption of the casting process and this defect occurs due to the sudden changes in the casting speed caused by the variations of steel temperature in the turn dish, by the variations of steel level in the mold or by the variations of casting mold. It can be removed by shortening the bar that contains it. Yes, this is the uh, what is a, uh, what's a physical uh, interruption in the physical continuity. You can see here, this is the interruption. Next one, shrinkage cavity. The causes that produce this defect are high casting temperature, high extraction speed and high intense secondary cooling. Shrinkage cavity represents a gap of material visible in the cross section at the end of a bar. Shrinkage cavity can be removed by cutting the end of the bar and the defective portion is rejected. This is the typical appearance of a shrinkage cavity. Next one, uh, let us see some important terms in the continuous casting. One is the liquid steel transfer. So, there are two steps involved in the transferring liquid steel from the ladle to the molds. First, the steel must be transferred from the ladle to the turn dish. Next, the steel is transferred from the turn dish to the mold. Next one, turn dish overview. What is this turn dish? Turn dish is a local reservoir which accommodates the molten metal before sending it through the mold. So, the shape of the turn dish is typically rectangular, but delta shapes are also common. The turn dish also serves several other key functions. One is the it enhances oxide inclusion separation. It provides a continuous flow of liquid steel to the mold during ladle exchanges. Even though the ladle sometimes ladle will fill the molten metal and it goes off, that time there should not be any interruption. That is why the uh, what say a tundish acts as the local reservoir. Next one maintains a steady metal height above the nozzles to the molds, thereby keeping steel flow constant and hence the casting speed con constant as well. Provides more stable stream patterns to the molds. Next one mold. The main function of the mold is to establish a solid shell sufficient in strength to contain its liquid core upon every in entry into the secondary spray cooling zone. The mold is basically an open ended box structure containing a water cooled lining, inner lining fabricated from a high purity copper alloy. The working surface of the uh, what say uh, copper face is often plated with chromium or nickel to provide a harder working surface and to avoid copper pickup on the surface of the cast strand, which can facilitate what is a surface cracks on the product. Next one, another important term is the mold oscillation. Mold oscillation is necessary to minimize friction and sticking of the solidifying shell and liquid steel breakouts, which can wreak havoc on the equipment machine downtime due to cleanup and repairs. Oscillation is achieved either hydraulically or via motor driven cams or levers which support and reciprocate the mold. Friction between the shell and mold is reduced through the use of the mold lubricants such as oils or powder, powdered fluxes. So, we are about to complete and before we wind up, let us review what we have learned. We have learned the types of the continuous casting process, the vertical continuous casting process, the curved continuous casting process, horizontal continuous casting process and the strip continuous casting process. Vertical casting process is divided into vertical downwards continuous casting and also vertical upward continuous casting process. So, these are the classifications of the casting, continuous casting process we have learned. Next, we have learned the different types of the electromagnetic steering what is a process we have seen. There are three types of EMS applications. One is the mold EMS, second one is the secondary cooling zone EMS, third one is the final solidification zone EMS we have learnt in this lecture. Next one, we have also seen the functions of the mold fluxes we have learnt. Next one, finally, we have learnt about different what is a continuous casting defects. With this, 
we are closing this lecture the continuous casting process thank you